Hello, my name is Emmanuel Capone-Piriou. I am a PhD candidate and an external lecturer at ATDP. I first approached the department in 2017 and I was uh, rapidly given the chance by Professor Vera Bullman to go teach uh, a course with her, in particular this Gegenwart Architecture course, which is a first year, first semester class designed to introduce students to contemporary topics in architecture. I officially started the PhD slightly later, in early 2018, and I have pursued it since then alongside an independent professional activity. So I came at the ATTP after graduating in architecture and architecture history and working for several years in public institutions dedicated to the conservation and diffusion of architecture by means of collecting and curating. And I would say I had a strong focus on an alternative um, historiography of modernity, one that emphasized experimentation, that is, one that emphasized architecture's capacity to forge questions and visions and projects uh, in adequacy with the mutating contemporary world, working to reveal virtualities or latent possibilities, be they technical, social, aesthetic, perceptive, and doing so notably by means of frictions with art and the humanities, but also by means of the assimilation of industrial and technological potentialities. And there are obviously many reasons why one wants to engage in a PhD research, and I don't mean to address all of them today, but what I would say is that I came to the ATTP simultaneously excited by the promises of computation in general and for architecture in particular, and unsatisfied, even put off, um, I would say, by most of the prominent discourses in the architectural field, uh, by how they treated the combined reconfiguration of techniques, knowledge, and domains of abstraction um, brought about by the generalization of you know, the digital and the advent of what has been coined the algorithmic condition. So in a way, it felt then, and it very much still feels, like architecture struggles to engage with the shifts brought about by IT and the so-called intelligent processes that unfold at non-human magnitudes. And architecture appears to be hesitating between a form of nostalgia and a blind enthusiasm towards these. But more precisely, it feels like the prominent positions occupy, let's say, two opposite poles of a single spectrum and paradoxically are producing similar effects. That is, they are reinforcing a univocal positivist understanding of technology and as a corollary, they are also draining imagination and the capacity of architecture to account for forms of invention that would not solely be you know, novelty or innovation. And both of these poles appear to be premised on an instrumental relation to techniques. One denotes a voluntarist approach on the one hand that translates into an arid or mute manner of processing, controlling and executing what is conceptualized in purely logical terms. And on the other hand, the other pole opposes such approach by means of a critique of logics of appropriation and domination and of the relative enforcement of power symmetries through the use of algorithmic processes of data-driven techniques of organization and preemptive forms of risk management. And although such, such explorations of technical potentialities on the one hand and such critiques of the ethical and political implications of technological processes on the other appear necessary, they both in a way foreclose the possibility of alienation and alienation understood as what could allow for the invention and modeling of new worlds as laborie Kubonics suggests. So I came to the ATTP precisely because from an exterior position, it appeared as a place where one could engage with questions that profoundly matter for this condition that we call the contemporary, 
including, as I was saying, notions of data, information, quantification processes, and a place where one could explore the civic, ethical, and aesthetical implications of such questions, but a place where this approach would never be inframed into a pre-established discourse. Or to put it in other words, the way in which one can approach this question about the ATTP um, is without any injection to abide by predetermined epistemological filters or manners to render and interpret things. And so, surfing back to this first course, the Gegenpass Architecture course, um, for the first two years, the years in which I was involved in it, uh, it was entitled The Very Many and the Big Plenty, Quantity and the Pressures. And it had great affinities with the PhD research proposal that I was crafting then and that I'm still currently developing. So the course reflected upon our being flooded, so to say, with information and proposed to think in such a light how architecture could attend to what it has always known, that is quantities and abstraction, in manners adequate to the current ecological and technological mutations. Manners, that is, that would depart from an instrumental or solutionist approach to technique, um, to rather open to dimensions of time, of uncertainty, of change and invention. And the question of quantity is at the heart of the research I'm engaged in, and it is with regard to this notion that I am asking in the PhD what only appears <laughs> to be a simple question, namely, can we still say we today? And how can architecture invent manners, or how can it accommodate such we, rationally and sensibly, given that the we is neither unique nor solidly human? The PhD aims at exploring this question in the context of what it addresses as an age of hyper-resolution with regard to the forms and evolutions of knowledge that are brought about by code, by the evolving status of numbers, letters, mathematics and language in the digital environment. And it proceeds by embracing the polysemic dimension of the notion of resolution in order to depart from a possibly negative understanding of it, um, if one considers the segmentation or the splitting up or even the atomization that is brought about by flows of currency and instantaneous streams of data, and it, de it departs from that to rather speculate on the possibilities of the entanglement of collectives with processes of individuation, or in other words, on mutual transformations of the subject and the we within material symbolic milieus. And in order to do so, the PhD proceeds through the evocation of different figures and episodes taken from modern and contemporary architecture, art and literature, in order to attend to the volatility and artificiality of our globally networked world. If there is such a strong focus in the PhD on our Occidental modernity, it is because it appears to have been a time haunted by the question of quantity. Um, and this quantity has in a way manifested under different guises since then. The time modernity was one of great numbers and probabilistic living under the effects of multiple causes where, in the words of Paul Valéry, one could find the highest possible number of chances, places, clarities, relations and eases amidst what he names the rich rumbling and the muffled rumour with bursts of noise. Modernity in such a light, then, appears as a time of abundance, rather than one of inhuman scarcity as naturalised by capitalism, it appears as a condition for which we still need today, as architects and researchers, to invent forms of inhabitation, or maybe I would say of anchoring, um, that is, ways of contingently establishing a locus. 
And so this first experience with the Gegenfaust Architektur has been the starting point of a journey which is still ongoing and which has taken many forms. Um, for example, the teaching of two architecture theory seminars, one dedicated to poetics and the dissolution of the poetic meter, the other to the antique tradition of looking at the sky, namely the meteora, as a way to reconsider the object. Um, and this process, which... Uh, is ongoing, as I was saying, is, I would say, maybe bewildering or, or disconcerting, and I mean that in a, in a positive key, because it is a process that implies not only learning, but also uh, unlearning very much, both in terms of references, of sources, of um, concepts, and of fields of knowledge that one is required to actively engage with when at ATTP, but it also has to do with how one attends to those. That is, um, working at the ATTP implies uh, to abandon known schemata and systemic viewing, and most specifically the primacy of analytical thinking, um, this kind of clarity that comes with it, in order to reconcile with what in the ATTP approach is defined as an architectonic thinking, that is a, thing, a form of thinking or manner of thinking which favors articulation and coding in how it attends to ideas. So the stepping out, or maybe rather this stepping in, <laughs> in the midst of things, um, implies a form of resistance or, or even an evasion from the fixity of meaning and this kind of alternating overpowering of positions that comes with dialectical thinking. And it therefore demands that one develops a different take on writing, not only in an effort to avoid the impassive or detached academic tone, but in order to reconcile with the inventiveness that architects have traditionally demonstrated when arguing through writing, right? When architects consider text as projects with their particular hierarchies, uh, stabilities and jointing. But more precisely also, it engages us to explore with figures, um, or rather to explore what figures and what modes of expressions and perception, and I would even say sensoriums, can be opened um, if one incorporates notions of quantification, of code, of probabilities, and if one kind of uh, subtly interweaves matter and meaning. And there are two sentences with which um, Yusulai K. Le Guin concludes her 1985 short tale, She Unnames Them, which for me at this point particularly capture this open-ended experience that is being a member of the ATTP. So we'll conclude with those. She writes, I could not chatter away as I used to do, taking it all for granted. My words must be as slow, as new, as single, as tentative as the steps I took going down the path away from the house, between the dark branched, tall dancers motionless against the winter shining. <laughs>